Ghost of Tsushima is a breathtakingly explorative tale that breathes new life into the samurai video game genre. The roughly 20 hours of main story missions and quests are executed so well and smoothly, and you get roped in from the moment you begin playing up until your final slash of your katana. The game does a great job exploring the themes present in Japan in the 13th century, from loyalty to revenge to honor, and so many more. The internal conflict of the main character, Jin Sakai, and his struggle with maintaining his honor while unleashing the powers of the ghost to take back his homeland is a thrilling roller coaster of emotions from beginning to end. Ghost of Tsushima does a great job making the game feel like an old school samurai movie while keeping the video game feeling intact the whole way through. There are so many good things to say about this game and that's exactly what I'll be doing today. What's up guys, it's Hero here and today we are reviewing Ghost of Tsushima from Sucker Punch Studios. We'll explore every aspect of the game from scenery and graphics, combat and gameplay, characters and story to try and praise and critique everything that Ghost of Tsushima does well and maybe not so well. Alright, let's get into it. This game is absolutely breathtaking. Like, I could literally spend this whole review talking about how beautiful this game looks and feels when you play, but you're not here for that. To try and sum up everything I have to say about this section, it's just amazing. Sucker Punch put so much effort into making this game look great and it certainly paid off. I don't normally go into photo mode in video games, but in Ghost of Tsushima I found myself becoming a semi-professional photographer. There's so many effects you can add to your photos to make them look amazing and Sucker Punch definitely did not cut any corners on this one. The scenery is beautiful whether you're out exploring on your horse, in a cutscene, or just chilling. Sucker Punch outdid themselves on this one, and honestly, this might be one of the most graphically stunning games I have ever played. 1270 before Japan might not have been this beautiful, but Sucker Punch definitely wanted you to believe it was. 10 out of 10 on this section, you guys absolutely killed it. Outsiders, send your finest warrior to face me. The gameplay in Ghost Tsushima is really good. We get to use the, as I like to call it, listen mode, which is very similar to the tactic we got to see in The Last of Us 2. Listen mode helps you locate your enemies, and since there are lots of them in certain bases or strongholds at times, this is extremely helpful. The gameplay is very smooth, and you rarely experience frame rate drops or lag. In terms of combat, Ghost of Tsushima does an excellent job giving you a satisfying feeling every time you fight an enemy. The hand-to-hand -hand or katana-to-katana -katana combat is very clean, and if you time your hits right, you can take out your enemies very easily. The skill tree upgrades you can unlock as you progress through the game comes in very ha handy later on in the game, when you fight harder enemies. The standoffs in this game are so fun as you get a truly satisfying feeling when an enemy tries to attack you and you completely destroy them in one swift motion. I personally love jumping from heights and digging my swords into enemies and it's definitely my favorite combat move. The different stances also help you with certain enemies and upgrading each stance is definitely a good idea. The bow you receive from Sensei Ishikawa at the beginning of the game comes in quite handy as you journey through Tsushima, and all the extra gadgets you unlock as you play help when dealing with any kind of enemy. All in all, the gameplay is very smooth and clean and the combat is very satisfying, whether you're cutting up your first Mongol all the way to your last. 10, in, 10 out of 10 on this section. Glad you're all here. We've lost too many friends. And family. In Ghost of Tsushima, you get to meet many individuals and get to learn about their unique stories. I'll be focusing on the main characters you meet as you play through their main story mission, starting with the game's protagonist, Jin Sakai. Nephew to the great Lord Shimura. And I am no coward! Jin Sakai is the main protagonist of the story in Ghost of Tsushima, and from the start of the game all the way to the end, you are captivated by his story. Played by Daisuke Suji, Jin goes through a roller coaster of emotions with high highs and some low lows as he is faced with defending his homeland of Tsushima from Mongol invaders. Jin is part of the Sakai clan, a famous and royal family in Tsushima that has produced a historic line of samurai that live by a code of honor. At the start of the game, we get to see a younger Jin interacting with his uncle Shimura, who taught him most of his combat skills and raised him as his own son after Jin's parents died. Jin's obedience to the samurai code gives him a rock hard personality that is only broken when he meets Yuna, the woman who saves him on Komoda Beach. Yuna is somewhat of a thief, and as the two spend more time together fighting the Mongols, Jin slowly ignores the samurai code and follows the path of the ghost, which is essentially to kill your enemies in any way necessary. It's this internal conflict that Jin carries throughout the game of sticking to what he knows and trying to maintain his honor versus putting that aside and coming to the ghost and doing whatever it takes to save Tsushima that makes his character so compelling and so unique. You want to root for Jin to stick to his samurai ways, but when faced with the judgment of his uncle, the betrayal of his best friend, and the loss of so many of his, of his fellow samurai, oop, spoiler alert, you have to realize he doesn't have much of a choice. Jin is a great character, and you can tell the conflict of good versus bad is the path that they wanted you to explore the most. In my opinion, Jin is a really good character overall, who you care about more due to his situation rather than his personality. The only thing you could critique him on is that he can be a little boring at times due to his tough shell of a personality, but if you were in his shoes and had to live through so much pain and bloodshed, your experiences would shape you in the same way. Jin Sakai, you're a great samurai, a great warrior, and a great main character in the story. 10 out of 10. I trained you to fight with honor. Honor died on the beach. Lord Shimura is one of the most important side characters in this whole story. He is Jin's uncle, a famous samurai bounded to the samurai code and can be considered the quote-unquote leader of Tsushima. 
Shimura never had any kids, so in his mind, Jin is basically his son, since he spent most of his life raising him and grooming him into the next great samurai. Jin and Shimura have a seemingly unbreakable bond, whether it's as two warriors, uncle and nephew, or two members of royalty. Shimura is a ruthless man whose methods of saving Sushima clashes with Jin's methods many times throughout the story. Shimura immediately disapproves of Jin's ghost tactics, as he believes that killing his enemies without honor makes him no better than the Mongols. However, Shimura fails to realize that the only way to save their island is by resorting to barbaric tactics, and once he does come to that realization, it's a bit too late. Shimura's efforts to keep Jin on the right track ends with him almost losing him completely, as Jin decides his allegiance to the people of his homeland is more important than his allegiance to his uncle. This is a moment where Shimura's loyalty to the need for honor as a samurai got kind of annoying for me at least. At the end of the game, Shimura is forced to remove Jin's samurai title, and the heartfelt moment before their last battle, where they reflect on their memories through the haiku, was one of my favorite Shimura moments of the whole game. Even though you were given the option to kill Shimura, I decided to spare him because I grew to like him and care, him as a, care about him as a character, and even though his obsession with honor got kind of annoying at times, he really did a good job as a complimentary character to Jin. I'll give Shimura a solid 9 out of 10. I am Kotan, cousin of Kublai, grandson of Genghis. Kotun has to be one of the most annoying villains I've ever encountered in any video game. Not annoying in the sense that he's a bad character, but every time you see him, he's doing something annoying. Whether it's taunting Shimura in prison, or forcing Ryuzo to kill innocent peasants, or seeing him toy with Jin and Taka, he just keeps doing annoying things. And in a way, that's what makes him a good and bad character. I like Kotun because he is merciless and ruthless, which means that as the game goes on, your hatred of him grows and grows, so at the end when you finally defeat him, you get a great sense of accomplishment and a thank god he's finally dead sort of feeling. Kotun does a great job giving us a sense of the ruthlessness of the Mongol Empire during the time, and since the game only uses fictional characters, I liked how the developers made him related to real life people like Kublai and Genghis Khan. In my opinion, Kotun's greatest weakness is that he is predictable. He goes around Tsushima, taking over everything he can, killing anyone that stands in his way, and so on. The only time he surprised me was when he sent out his men to blow up the bridge at Castle Shimura, and that felt more like an idea to drive a wedge in between Jin and Shimura than Kotun actually having a smart military idea. I like Kotun because he makes you genuinely feel bad for the characters as they suffer at his hands, but at the same time, he doesn't really do much to surprise you. Whether or not you like that in a villain is up to you. Overall, he's a solid villain and an enemy to Jin and Shimura, but I feel like he could have been just a tad more interesting. I'll give him a solid 7.5 out of 10. You're Jin Sakai, the Jito's nephew? Yuna is a badass from beginning till end in this game. She saves Jin on Komoda Beach, so without her, the story is completely different. The first time we see her, she's literally murdering a Mongol in front of Jin, so she gets my respect from the very beginning. Yuna's never-ending desire to protect her brother Taka shows that she's a compassionate lady that is doing her best to hold on to the last of her family, and the bond she and Taka share truly is special. Yuna's lifelong dream to move to the mainland with Taka and start a new life is a storyline I was roped into right at the start, and even though I didn't want her to leave the game, I felt that she was making the right choice for herself. Her dedication, whether it's to saving her brother or protecting her homeland, when she sets her mind out to do something, there's no stopping her, and that's what I like about her. When Taka dies, you can tell she's shook up and her loyalty switches from Taka to Jin. Her and Jin make an unstoppable duo, and seeing them tear up the Mongols that you encounter makes you like her as a character even more. Honestly, I can't really think of a moment where I didn't like Yuna. She's a great side character who has good qualities like dedication, leadership, and loyalty. Not much more you can ask for a sidekick to Jin, someone who has lost almost everything and everyone he has ever known. Yuna is great and Sucker Punch gave us a really good addition to the crew on this one. 10 out of 10. An iron hook with a rope attached to the end. Taka is like that little sibling that never leaves you alone and asks you if you have any games on your phone at the family gathering. He's just always there, following you like a dog, and honestly, it's kind of funny. Taka is almost useless in combat, but a very good craftsman who helps Jin when he takes back Castle Canada. The grappling hook that Taka gives Jin really helps his character out, as you can tell they're now friends and Jin is relying on him, even though they aren't battling side by side. I feel like Taka is always looking at the Jin and listening to what he says rather than what Yuna says, and at times, it just feels like he is maybe just a little bit obsessed. And it sucks because it's this obsession with following the ghost that ultimately gets him killed. Taka's stubbornness in following Jin to Fort Koyasan, where both Jin and Yuna explicitly told him not to, is what gets him and Jin captured by Kotun. And then, when he's given a chance to run away, and Jin literally tells him to run, he thinks he can just turn around and kill the leader of the Mongol Empire? Like, what? <sighs> you just watch him and feel bad because he's so clueless at times. What sucks the most about his death is that it stings. Even though Taka is just an ally to Jin, when Kotun slays him in front of you, you just feel guilty for his death, even though it was all on him for not obeying orders. Taka is a cool character, but his stubbornness at times can be a tad annoying. Overall, his funny attitude and loyalty to Jin tops his flaws, so I'll give him a solid 8 out of 10. The Khan put a bounty on the ghost. 
Ryuzo was a pretty cool character that I enjoyed interacting with up until he betrayed Jin. I liked the friend dynamic between him and Jin and how Ryuzo was willing to do anything to save his men by getting them food. When he recruits Jin to the Straw Hats, you feel like you're a team and things are going great. Just as we're starting to like Ryuzo, he joins the enemy and you instantly hit him for it. Like, I guess it can be justified based on the situation, but at the same time, kind of a dick move, man. Having to watch Ryuzo burn the innocent people is really hard to watch and left a sour taste in my mouth. After that moment, I lost all respect for him. I wouldn't say Ryuzo is a bad character because he can be interesting at times, but I really stopped liking him after the battle in Castle Canada when he officially switched sides. Just like Jin, I was in disbelief too. It's hard to give Ryuzo a rating on this one just because I really liked him at the start but then really did not like him afterwards. But I guess I'll give him a 7 out of 10, all things considered. I am Kenji, upstanding merchant, renowned sake brewer, and the best swindler on the island. Apart from the characters I named, there were other characters that were part of Jin's army. People like Lady Masako, Sensei Ishikawa, Norio, and a few others helped Jin throughout his journeys, but we didn't get to see much of them in the main story missions. I know that there are side quests you can do with these characters to learn more about their past and about their personalities, but since I have only played the main story, I can't really say much about them. If I decide to play the side missions of these characters and upload it as a miniseries, I'll give them a little review at the end of each of their episodes. Deal? Alright, sweet. Now for the big one. Poison the enemy. An act of terror. I'm trying to save our people by teaching them to fear us. Ghost of Tsushima's story is really well written. It's the right amount of intense, emotional, exciting, interesting, and so many other good adjectives. The game is broken down into three main acts, with the first act focusing on introducing you to the island, meeting your allies, and saving your uncle. The second act focuses on you building your army, gaining more allies, and becoming the Ghost of Tsushima. The third act focuses on you planning your final attack on Kotun Khan and eventually taking him out. Personally, every act is really good and really solid, and it flows seamlessly from one act to another as one solid, fluid story. Personally, my favorite act is the second one, with the Battle of Yarikawa mission being one of my favorite missions in the whole game. It's filled with so much action, looks stunning, and at the end, Jin gives a powerful speech where you can tell he has made it his responsibility to save the people of Tsushima. The story does a really good job at developing character relationships. Jin and Shimura have a really tight bond until it is broken, then he goes and has a strong bond with Yuna who helps him all the way to the end. Jin gets back to his village and gets to spend time with Yuriko who has a big influence in his life growing up. Shimura wanting the best for Jin and telling him he wants to adopt him warms your heart. Kenji saving Jin from prison is another nice example of loyalty between characters. If there's one thing this game does really well, it's establishing solid relationships between characters. Honestly, I'm trying to think of a part of this game where I was either bored or genuinely didn't like a scene or a story mission, and I honestly can't. The story is great, the action never ends, and you are invested in every single character from the start. You are able to feel the highest highs and the lowest lows. When you take back a village, you feel great. When you lose a valued ally, you feel sad. This story really hits you where it hurts, whether it's in a good way or a bad way. Amazing job, Sucker Punch. This story is unforgettable. 10 out of 10 for me. You have no honor. And you are a slave to it. Ghost of Tsushima is truly a masterpiece that will go down in both PS4 history and gaming history. With this generation of consoles slowly entering its twilight years, Ghost of Tsushima reminds us just how far we've come in terms of gameplay, graphics, and great storytelling. I remember the first game I played on the PS4 was Sucker Punch's earlier installment, Infamous Second Son. When I played this game, I was like, wow, this studio made a really great game. There's no way they can top this. And six years later, Sucker Punch went out and produced this gem of a game called Ghost of Tsushima. You have to give mad props to this studio for going out and doing what they do at such a high standard. Ghost of Tsushima is amazing, and you can get lost in the awesomeness of this game. Will you spend hours exploring the beautiful island of Tsushima, slowly but surely taking out the Mongol Empire, or witnessing Jin's transformation from samurai leader to the Ghost of Tsushima, this game will never stop amazing you. This game deserves a 10 out of 10 from me, and there is no argument about it. I can't wait to see what Sucker Punch does in the next generation of consoles, but whatever it is, I know it'll be a banger. For now, I will return to Tsushima to fight off the last Mongols, and I won't stop until Jin has taken each and every single one of them out and saved his homeland. Goodbye for now. What a game, man. What a game.